Hey guys, Carl here, and today in SQL we're going to be doing joins with conditions. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to be doing a select all from sales, and then we're just going to do an inner join. If I can spell that right, inner join customers. on sales dot id equals customer dot id so we're going to hit f5 here so now we get an opportunity to see what our data set will look like with this join the conditions that you want to add can really vary based on how you want to do your data analysis on your query tables so we can see here that we have several different things that will make sense in a business case how many users use visa how many users use mastercard or discover or how many people use discover now one thing about join that a lot of people will may not consider is making sure that you did the join the right way so as you can see here I intentionally did an inner join because it was going to bring me back 10 rows. Now imagine I work for a big corporation or a company and I wanted to come in and do an assessment of their data. Now the join that I will use is really not the inner join. It'll be the full outer join. So let's see what happens when we add the full outer join. So if we add this full outer join and let's just make it all caps. So if we go here and do an F5, now we get to see all of the data including the null values so now i get an opportunity to say okay even though it's giving me null values now i know exactly what i have and now we can see that we even have some american express and we also have an additional va uh, additional visa card type and so if we would have did any kind of data analysis on just the inner join alone there would have been some data missed out and we could have had some miscalculations and we could have really been in the funk we could have been basically ten thousand and eight hundred dollars short in our data analysis so let's go ahead and break this down by adding a condition in so we're going to take away this and then let's just say where let's just say the card type like visa so this is going to tell us how many visas were used in our data set. So let's hit execute. So now we get the opportunity to see that, okay, visa were used five times. However, there wasn't a customer ID entered for that. So now we have some money that is really unaccounted for. So now in the data audit, we can see, okay, they know that they've used the visa card in this retail store, but they did not get an opportunity to see what that customer ID was, the customer name, gender, address. Now we have cleanup to do. So that is one condition that we can use. So let's just come here, let's do that. And then let's just come back here and hit F5. So just to bring back all our data. So another condition we can use is, what if we wanted to know how many cards went over that thousand dollar threshold? So now we can come here and say where amount greater than or equal to $1,000. So now we can just say F5, and now we get an opportunity to look at our data and see that we have 10 cards that had purchases that was over $1,000, which is great. And then we can kind of take this and flip it the other way and say, give me 10 cards that had less than a thousand. So now we see that we only had two that had less than a thousand, which was only 500 and 800 but we still have that null customer and we got to figure out how did this customer get missed and where's the information for that customer. So let's just go ahead and come here, F5. One last condition we can try is just like the store category, we can go into gender. What if we wanted to see how many men made purchases versus how many women made purchases? How do we do that? Let's just say we had where gender like male by doing that we hit f5 now we see how many males made purchases and if we come here and just change that to female 
and do this. Now we'll see how many females made purchases. So it's clear that more females made purchases than males. And now you know how to add conditions to your joints.